Welcome back. It's been a little while, but uh, it's time to get back into the swing of things. So the last video we covered what your gear looks like, all the different variations and stuff like that. So the next step is going to be how to put it together. What I'm about to show you is a generic impression that would, should get you through almost every event um, with some tweaks to be done on top of it. This is going to be more of an earlier war style uniform. And like I said, my goal is to be able to get this set up. You can go off to any event and be within acceptability. Uh, every unit's going to be a little bit different, so you're going to want to talk to your unit to get the fine points. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of different variations you can use, but we're not going to cover that just right now. So first off, you'll see I have the 37 wool shirt, pants, and I have the low quarter shoes. I'm sorry, the Type 1 service shoes, and I've got the trouser belt. I went ahead and did this part because I figure 99% of you will be able to figure this out by yourself. If you can't, I'm sorry, go find your NCO, have them yell at you, get a knife hand in there a couple times, and you'll figure it out from there. Uh, quick tips for this. The uniform top, obviously you want it tucked in for the 37s, and you want these pants to be higher than a normal pair of pants for modern day. If you don't, when you crouch down, you could actually blow out the crotch of your pants, and that's going to be an awkward situation for everyone. You don't want it. All right, so next step is going to be the leggings. I'm going to have to do a close-up with these. Otherwise, it's going to be very confusing. So we're going to cut to that scene, and I'm going to show you each side bit by bit to make this happen. Pay close attention. It's complicated. Kill it. All right, the legging is probably the most complicated piece of equipment you're going to use, and that is being said by a person that has trained multiple brand new recruits and love to watch just how chaotic it gets. All right, so the first thing you wanna make sure is that this bottom strap is looped in and through here. You're probably going to want fully loosened. And by fully loosened, it's pretty much the tab is gonna be on the top part. Next, you gotta make sure your string or your legging laces is actually ins inserted into all the eyelets correctly. This is how it starts. Make sure it goes inside the legging on the bottom one, and then just opposite all the way up. This is how you check which side it is. The hooks, think about it. The hooks go to the rear, because otherwise you're gonna catch all, every single blade of grass and weed and stick that you possibly can, all right? Uh, as far as sizing goes, they're pretty much 1R to 5R. Anything outside of that is gonna be special. Uh, if you actually fit a 1R, those are extremely rare because they're tiny. Uh, most people are gonna be in the three to four range nowadays. Uh, just have to measure it. Uh, there's a couple of sizing options online to actually check out what exact size you'll need. All right, without further ado, we're gonna start this process. Make sure you have the laces out on the outside of your foot. You're gonna put this and the string as a stirrup. The strap stays under the arch of your foot. If you have too much pant, cuff it up. And now you're gonna lace them around. This one on the back side of the foot, I have a small knot. That just holds it in place. So now I can grab that first loop, tighten it down and grab that hook. And the next one, it's a magic trick. Usually the first one's the worst. Tighten it down, grab that hook. You do it all the way up. I just missed it there. So you, you will see that these do, do take a little bit of finesse to get them to work correctly. But once you get used to it, it's not terrible, as I just missed another one. Leggings have been seen all the way up to the end of the war. So if you decide to be one of the cool folks and use leggings for your entire impression, you will be good all the way through. Oh, let me tell you on this one. So basically when you get to the top, there's no real knot or anything. You start with the farthest forward. I do the back. And then I will loop it through and then stuff the rest in there. You can actually tell by the way this legging is here, I'm at, I might be a little bit on the big side. You want this to actually support your leg. This is something that uh, when you're in the field, 
moving around, trying to climb and uh, crawl over things. This will help support your ankle. So this one's done. Now we're going to swap to the other side. All right, we've got the strap, we've got the lace, we've got the hooks to the rear. This one's going to be quicker because you already saw one. So you should be perfect now. All right, you get your stirrup on there. Get the string around the heel. I've got one cuff. First, first hook. Second hook. This one's been used a little bit, so that hook's a little bent. Much faster when I'm not talking the whole time, right? Done. Just got to tuck the excess. All right, once again, there we go. This is a bare bones basic webbed set. So we've got the first aid pouch right here. We have a canteen, it has the canteen cup inside and a canteen on it. This is generally what I suggest for people that are just learning how to wear their kit. The first aid kit's gonna be on the front right, canteen's back left. Kind of balances out a slight bit. And if you really wanna put a bayonet on, you can. You're probably gonna to wanna to have it on the left side of your body, but that will also make this unbalanced. So the way to do these, so I've had this question a million times. I don't know if using this in a video is gonna really help, but we're gonna try anyways. So you have the wire hanger. When it's on this thing, it's gonna look something like this, okay? Now, start with one end on. You start from the inside of the belt, go to the outside. Now, to do the second one, this is the more complicated one, you usually have to fold the belt in on itself, put the hanger through the inside to the outside. Once you get used to it, it's real easy, but until you get to that point, it's complicated, you have no idea what's going on, and yeah. But it actually works once everything's set up nicely. And then, of course, you're gonna wanna insert your blanks, but that's down the road. This is how the belt's gonna look when it's on your body, like so. And you'll see that here shortly. It's really complicated to put on a belt, you'll be fine. All right, so now you have your leggings, your web belt, all that good stuff. You have the bare, bare, very bare bones uh, basics. I'm gonna show you a quick way of doing the haversack. We're not gonna go through the entirety of it because that's a whole video by itself. Now this one, it's a 43 dated, it's repro, don't get too excited but you have two front straps and one rear strap. One way you can do it is attach all six of these clips to your belt. It's a little cumbersome, I wouldn't recommend it. One of the first things that I did when I first started was I take the rear clip and I take one of the fronts and I clip them together. So once you do that, you have yourself a backpack. And you have these other two spare ones, so when this starts drooping down like it's going to, you can take these two clips, adjust them. This is obviously not my own personal kit. This is a loaner kit that we have here at the Thunderbirds. So I have to adjust it on the fly. But LT, why the hell didn't you adjust it before you started it? Because Flexibility is the key to winning wars and everything. All right, now that I have this adjusted out, I can come down here to one of the top eyelets on the belt itself. You just kind of pick one. It's a lot easier to take it off than it is to put it on. There we go. Do this one real quick. Now, when your belt is chock full of blanks, 
and it's trying to disappear on you, you have something holding it up. And you also have something keeping your back, or your pack from falling down. But if you need to ditch it real quick, you just take these two, and you're off to the races. All right. So, now that we got these two, while I'm clipping this back, I'm gonna ask my uh, handy assistant to hand me my rifle. actually all set for your first display first battle first whatever just note you don't know what you're doing just that you look decent all right so another thing is if I catch anyone doing this with your rifle I will beat you that is not how they carried it in World War II if you see those in actual photos it was very quickly it was very rare the GIs were trained up like this at port arms you'll see plenty of photos like that this is the primary way you want to carry it you can also one-handed over your sling try not to slam your helmet like I just did or any other different way just no low ready some rifles you can even do a cradle you'll figure out what's most comfortable for you to go your long distances but just don't do the low ready please all right that being said you're good to go for all your basic stuff now we're going to start doing the varsity level stuff and how to really sell the impression. This is just basically, hey, he looks good from a distance, but just don't open your mouth yet because you don't know what you're doing until you start digging into the real nitty gritty nuts and bolts. All right, till next time.